I'm Dr. Philip Greip. Uh, I'm a professor of medicine at Mayo Medical School. Uh, the article we're speaking about today is uh, idiopathic capillary leak syndrome, or Clarkson's uh, syndrome, uh, the Mayo Clinic experience. Currently published online, and, with, and it will appear in the October issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. The primary purpose of this study was to review our experience with 25 patients with uh, systemic capillary leak syndrome seen at Mayo Clinic. Uh, this is a retrospective review uh, designed to look at the presenting signs and symptoms, the outcome, and the survival of these patients. The primary observation is that 76% of these patients were alive at five years. This is still a fatal syndrome. It's very important for uh, the physician in practice, whether he in, be an internist or a pulmonary care specialist or a hematologist, understand this syndrome and its definition and treatment. Patients present with low blood pressure, edema. They have concentration of their blood manifest by high hematocrit, and they have a drop in their serum albumin uh, because of the capillary leak. In addition, 76% of our patients had a monoclonal gammopathy, which may be part of the cause of the syndrome. The majority of these patients close to 90% were treated with a combination of aminophilin or theophylline and terbutaline. The main finding is that about half of these patients experienced a response to this treatment, either a diminution of the frequency and severity of attacks or a complete disappearance of the, free, of the attacks. Of, of six patients that had a complete disappearance of the attacks, uh, all were sustained. Three of these patients had uh, a sustained disappearance of the attacks without any further uh, treatment with the drug. Three patients remain on the, the drug uh, that was used for uh, treatment of the attacks. Uh, two of these uh, uh, were pediatric age uh, children who had uh, disappearance of the attack, uh, neither of these had monoclonal proteins in their blood. Another important finding was that even though the majority of these patients had monoclonal gammopathy, they did not develop multiple myeloma. Only one patient developed multiple myeloma during the course of this uh, follow-up, and it was many years after uh, it was initially recognized. The rate of development of multiple myeloma appeared to be very similar to the rate of development in the general population. The important thing for patients to realize is that there is treatment for this disease, which is effective at preventing the disease. While it is associated with, in some cases, unacceptable side effects and it's not able to be continued, the uh, majority of patients are able to continue to take the drug and to d develop therapeutic levels. It's important for patients to recognize that their attacks may completely disappear on this treatment, but that they may, they may not, and they may need other treatments. We have documented here in our article the use of other agents besides the theophylline and terbutaline combination, uh, in, including uh, uh, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor therapy, and uh, Monte Lucast therapy. Uh, in addition, uh, we would add that patients have received a variety of other treatments, including intravenous immunoglobulin, with benefit. So the important message for patients is it's important for their doctor to recognize this syndrome. Uh, it's important that they seek treatment and that many treatments are available. It's also important for them to realize that they should probably be seen at a center or their doctor should communicate with someone at a center where these patients are seen. For research in this disease, we don't know the cause of the syndrome itself. It's believed to be possible that the abnormal protein found in most of the patients 
somehow interacts with the blood vessel to produce the capillary leak. However, the mechanism is completely unknown. We only have clues from the effective treatments. That is, the theophylline and terbutaline uh, points to pathways uh, of uh, chemistry in the cell which uh, may be interfered with and bring about a prevention of the syndrome. Or the intravenous immunoglobulin may block the uh, uh, monoclonal protein from affecting the blood vessels. Uh, therefore, this gives us clues to new treatments which might be applied. We are conducting research currently with, uh, in association with the National Institutes of Health with regard to this syndrome. I think the main takeaway message to this uh, paper and experience is that it's important to recognize the syndrome. There were patients uh, in our series who had repeated attacks of systemic capillary leak syndrome, three to five attacks per year uh, for uh, upwards of five years, some one, one case up to 32 years before the syndrome was actually diagnosed. Many of these patients presenting look like they have sepsis uh, because of the drop blood pressure and the uh, uh, grave illness uh, requiring intensive care treatment quite often. Uh, and <coughs> it's not re recognized that they have this uh, unusual syndrome. Patients who have uh, decreased blood pressure or edema for other causes are not appropriately treated with theophylline and terbutaline nor intravenous immunoglobulin. Uh, therefore, it's important to recognize the syndrome so the appropriate treatment can be applied. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.